All right, this is Road and Track presents The Need for Speed for the Sega Saturn? <laughs> yeah. So, um, I've always loved the original Need for Speed. I originally played it on the 3DO. And um, it was a very slow and methodic game on the 3DO. It was very much a simulator for its time. And when they eventually brought it to the PlayStation and the Saturn, um, they sped it up a little bit and made it a little bit more arcade-like. So I'm very interested to check this one out. From what I've heard, the Sega Saturn version is actually a little bit better than the PlayStation version uh, in a few regards, although they're both really good. This is the one case where they're very, very similar. Um, yeah, I keep mentioning this is for the Sega Saturn. <laughs> and yeah, as you can see, it's the PlayStation Long Box, which I love the Long Box games, by the way. It's the PlayStation Long Box, which I've always loved, um, but inside is the Saturn version. So I saw this in a game store, and it was 29 bucks, and I was like, you know, that's cool. I don't see the Long Box, you know, games very often, and it's in pretty good shape considering it's a cardboard box. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, so I was like, yeah, I'll take that. And the, the cashier pulls it out of the, uh, pulls it out of the, the cabinet, the glass cabinet. And, um, he kind of shows me the disc to show me like the condition it's in, you know? And as soon as I see the bottom, I'm like, oh, it's not black. It's silver. That's not a PlayStation one game. And I figured he was going to flip it over and I was going to see like the PC CD-ROM <laughs> version which isn't worth a lot of money uh, to me anyways. It's not something I would have wanted. Um, but when he flipped it over and I saw it was the Sega Saturn version, I thought, oh, that's interesting because, you know, like I said, I've heard the Sega Saturn version is really good. I think it's a little more less common or at least it's worth a little bit more. So it was actually kind of a bonus. The cashier's like, uh, whoops. Um, you know, if you want it, I'll still sell it to you. You know, okay. <laughs> I still paid the 29 dollars for it it's kind of weird that it's the saturn version in the playstation box but hey that's kind of cool <laughs> i like having the box just because it's the long box and um and there you have it that is the need for speed on the sega saturn so let's check this out i'm super excited to have the saturn up and running haven't had the saturn out for years hopefully it still works let's go Oh, well, I guess this was expected. <laughs> let's uh, let's set the quote-unquote proper time. Oh yeah, I haven't seen that in a while. Looks like my Saturn is working. We've got the access light going on. This is running through composite, just to the retro tank. So. Don't expect it to look amazing, but I think for composite, it's going to look okay. So let's check this out.
Alright, so you might have noticed a weird little uh, gap in the editing there when I was selecting the car, uh, the Honda NSX. Uh, and now we're looking at the game uh, from, you know, through my camera, not through the capture device. The reason is, I wasn't recording at this moment, and this is the only time I could get the game to load up with the NSX. Um, every single time I tried to load the game using the NSX, um, it would crash while loading. And um, it's not the track. I tried different tracks and I tried different opponent cars. It didn't matter what combination uh, of track or opponent cars I was selecting. As long as I was selecting the NSX, it would crash while loading. Uh, it actually crashed the very first time I tried to load the game with the NSX. It just so happened to be with the NSX. And I thought, um, okay, that was weird, but you know, I reset it and I retried again um, with the NSX and it did load and that's what you're seeing now. The crazy thing is I tried to reload this game, like turning off the Saturn, turning it on again, and you know, selecting a different track, selecting the NSX, and it would crash while loading. And I tried this like, 10 times, 12 times, um, and it crashed every single time. Sometimes it would make it like halfway through the loading screen and then it would crash. Sometimes it would only make it like a, a quarter of the way through the loading screen and then it would crash. Um, so that's really weird. I don't know if this, the disc is in decent condition, but it's not perfect. It might just be there just so happens to be like a scratch. Or something on the disc and it's right where the files for the uh, for the NSX are doesn't happen if I pick any other car uh, any other car it's loaded up like flawlessly every single time the NSX I just got lucky I think the second time it happened to load and I haven't been able to get it to load with the NSX since Anyways, so here we are back in Capture, talking about the game a little bit more. So, this isn't the Need for Speed, oh no, no, no. This is Road and Track Presents the Need for Speed. Now, Road and Track was like a car review magazine back in the early 90s. And um, so, that's kind of where, like, this game got its credit, its, uh, like, car guy cred, I guess. From because they had like road and track behind them. They had all these these videos and you know slaloms and you know zero to sixty quarter mile and all this video footage of all these exotic cars. Um, and there wasn't very many games on console before this that had so many um, different like licensed cars. Like I can think of like a few games where maybe you just had like a specific Lamborghini. Uh, maybe a specific Ferrari um, But I can't think of many games where you had a selection like this um, There's some of like the test drive games, I guess um, Prior to this where you had a selection um, But in here we have a pretty good selection um, and they're all Exotic sports cars that would have been desirable um, During this time so we got like the Corvette. It's not just a Corvette. It's the Corvette ZL1, um, which is uh, like a dual overhead cam Lotus powered version of the Corvette. Very cool car. Um, and you got obviously like the Toyota Supra, the Mazda um, RX7, um, the, the Honda NSX. Um, there is, I think, a Ferrari F40 and uh, the Lamborghini Countach, I think, or Diablo. I think Sorry, yeah, it's the Diablo that's in this one. So yeah, pretty wide selection of cars and it's, you know, multiple manufacturers. So fairly novel for its time. Um, and then, like I said, the original 3DO version, like the original version of this game came out in December of 1994. 1994, man, like 
this game was very advanced for its time. I remember I rented a 3DO back in the day um, with this game. I say this game, it's not exactly the same game. Um, the PlayStation port and the Saturn port didn't come out until uh, March of 1996. And... Um, well, actually, that's for the PlayStation. The PlayStation version came out in March 1996. The Saturn version didn't come out until June of 1996. Um, so almost like, you know, a year and a half uh, after this game uh, was originally on the 3DO. Um, and, you know, it maybe wasn't the most um, technically advanced or pretty looking game by June of 1996, but I'm telling you, man, December 1994, in December of 1994, this was outstanding looking. Again, it's not the same game. The 3DO version ran a lot slower, um, and so you could say that this one's a little more arcade-like, but this is still a hard game. Like, the, you gotta memorize the tracks. There's there are parts in the tracks where you will have to break. You've got to know what corners you need to break on. And um, and the AI is brutal. Like, the opponent cars on the on the track, they're, like, crazy, man. They'll, they'll push you off the track and shit and <laughs> get in your way. Um, so the game is pretty damn difficult. Um, now, obviously, you can kind of make it a little easier by, you know, picking a really fast car for yourself. And picking a slow car for the opponent car, but yeah, still, still a pretty tricky game. Uh, you do, you definitely have to learn the tracks, um, and you do need to use your brakes. So, it is fairly um, simulation driven, I think. Uh, again, especially for a, a console game for the time. I mean, coming from the 16-bit era, there was nothing like it, uh, and that's again, you gotta. You gotta think of the time period, you know, 1994, 1995, most people were still rocking their 16-bit consoles, maybe you've played some of the FMV games on like the Sega CD, but coming to a, like a 3D uh, racing game like this, this advanced is, it was awesome, and that's kind of why I'm, I'm kind of coming back to the early generation, like the early PS1, early Sega Saturn, the long box games. I think the long box games are cool because the boxes are cool, but that era of PS1 to me really holds up. Like 1995, when these games were fairly ahead of the curve, um, at least compared to the later half. You start getting into 97, 98, 99, and some of these games on PS1, like I remember renting Need for Speed 3 on PS1, and it's just a chug fest. It's a slideshow. The game runs like garbage, and I was used to the PC version already by that time, and that's kind of what I'm saying, is like by the time you got into the later 90s, the PCs had pulled ahead so far. You had 3D acceleration cards, and seeing like the Need for Speed 3, and the, I remember Need for Speed 4 too. Was it Hot Pursuit? I think. Um, like seeing Need for Speed um, 3 and 4 on a PC with like a 3D accelerator card, uh, where it was just you know sharp resolution and very smooth gameplay. Um, and then I remember playing, renting the Need for Speed 3 on PS1, and it was almost unplayable. Um, and so, yeah, I'm kind of like more, almost more, almost more nostalgic for the early era of the PS1 and the Saturn now. And um, it's great I got this game for the Saturn. I don't, you know, have a ton of games for the Saturn. I didn't play a lot of the Saturn during its heyday uh, and so it's kind of I'm kind of glad I got this you know the Saturn version of this and um, the Saturn version like I said it is a, it is good um, it runs basically I think frame rate wise it basically runs the same as the PS1 version there's a couple of parts for the PS1 version looks a little bit better some of the lighting like when you go under the bridge uh, when you go under the when you go under the tunnels on the PS1 version kind of like changes the lighting uh, but on the flip side, the PS1 version, it's got that, like, um, 
really bad, um, like, correction, perspective correction stuff. The really bad, like, jaggies. Um, jaggies isn't really the right term. It's that, that like, texture wobble. <laughs> Uh, you know, the PS1 suffers with that and the Saturn version. It has it a little bit, but it's not nearly as bad. And um, I find that's very noticeable if you play in the, uh, like, the nose cam um, view. And just look at the lines on the road. Uh, on the PlayStation version, the lines on the road are a lot, like, wobblier with that bad, you know, Z-axis texture correction stuff that the PS1 kind of sucked at <laughs> the physics feel modern enough and like i can recognize all the cars these 3d models are primitive but i can tell that's an rx7 in front of me <laughs> um and that's cool man like i'm a fan of all these cars um all these uh you know early to mid 90s uh, japanese cars um the corvette zr1 and uh, I have the Dodge Vipers in here. I haven't even tried playing with the Dodge Viper yet. But, um, yeah, it's a fun game. Uh, the controls are great. I love that, you know, you can actually shift with the L and R triggers. Um, which, I mean, again, there was some Super Nintendo games. I think, um, what, Top Gear 2? I think you'd shifted with, with the L and R triggers, but... Again, kind of like a novel concept for its time, I, I guess. Kind of coming from the 16-bit era and the Genesis and stuff. And, you know, a lot of, like, arcade games where if you had a manual option, you, you had, like, high and low. <laughs> or low and high, I guess I should say. Um, you know, you didn't have, like, six speeds of gears to go through. Um, so, you know, again, this is, like, really freaking cool for its time. Again, I'm just glad I picked this up for the Saturn. <laughs> In a funny coincidence, I mean, I thought I was buying the PlayStation version and, and ended up being the Saturn version, but I, I mean, I'm still happy to pick that up, maybe more so. Um, yeah, it would be cool maybe to, to get the PS1 version if I find it like loose and it's cheap and then I can put that in the, you know, in the proper box, but regardless, it's really awesome to have a Saturn the Saturn version of this. Um, other than the fact it won't load the NSX, <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. Again, maybe it's just the disc, um, you know. Again, it's not in terrible shape. I think they even ran it through their little polishing machine before I bought it. Um, you know, there's a couple of minor scratches on there, but they're not crazy. Um, but I guess you never know if just one of those happens to be in the right spot or maybe it was a known issue with this game. I have no idea. I doubt it. <laughs> Is there like an issue with this game with the NSX? I doubt it, but I, I don't know. Um, anyways, guys, um, you got m memories of this game on PS1 or, or Saturn or the original, the original 3DO, man. That system was so ahead of its time, and you know EA hit it hard. You had you know the Need for Speed and uh, and Road Rash on that thing. Um, those two games alone. You know, in like 1994, were outstanding um, and really showed what the 3DO was capable of. You know, obviously there wasn't enough good games for it, and it was just way too expensive. It was never going to catch on. Um, but I loved renting the thing, <laughs> and again, I rented uh, the 3DO back in the day with this, uh, well, this 3DO version of this game. Um, so yeah, I love this game and super, super glad I've, I stumbled across the Saturn version here. So that's it guys. See you later.